A couple of videos back, I restored this custom Dodge Charger. After polishing and painting the car, I discovered, to my horror, large patches of discoloration in the metal. These discolorations are caused by me sanding through the zinc plating into the pot metal below. To remedy this issue, I need to replate the car in zinc, which I discussed in my last video. There are a few ways of doing this, but I decided to go with the simplest and cheapest way that I'm going to show you here. So let's get started. Everything you're going to need you can purchase at most box stores, including a container to hold your white distilled vinegar, half a cup of Epsom salts, a D-cell battery that I've taped leads to the positive and negative ends using electrical tape. I like to use these alligator uh, clamp type wires to hold the car. You'll need some zinc strips. I'll leave a link in the video description. A spoon to mix the solution up. A air pump, aquarium type, really cheap. This will agitate the water. To get started, we will pour the salt into the distilled vinegar and mix it with our spoon. After the solution is thoroughly mixed and all the crystals have dissolved, we're going to take one of the zinc electrodes and simply place it in the solution. You'll need to stay here for about four to six hours. You can even go overnight if you like. After a few minutes, you'll notice bubbles forming on the zinc electrode. This is the vinegar attacking the zinc metal and forming zinc acetate. This is the key ingredient in our plating bath and our source for zinc ions. Once we have enough zinc acetate, we can begin plating the car. Before we plate the car, however, we need to prepare it. By prepare it, I mean we need to remove any contamination on the metal surface, especially any oils. I've already washed the car with soap and water, but now I'll drench it in a degreaser. Here I'm using a degreaser made by Zepp, but you could also use other solvents like acetone if you like. Once the car has been washed with the degreaser, I will then wash the degreaser off with distilled water. I can't emphasize enough how important these cleaning steps are. Just touching the metal after these steps would contaminate the surface with oils from your fingers. These oils would seal off the metal from the plating bath causing an inconsistent plate. One way you can tell if the surface is clean and without any oils is to look at the car after you've washed it with distilled water. The car is wet, but there are no droplets on the surface. It is oil that causes the water to beat up. No oil, and the water just sheets off. That's a good indication that the car is clean and ready to go into the plating bath. With everything ready, I can now begin plating the car. The setup is simple. I have a zinc electrode connected to the positive side of my D-cell battery, and the car is connected to the negative side. I'll suspend the car in the solution using a clamp. I'll be sure that the car is fully submerged in the solution and is the maximum distance from the zinc electrode. When everything is in place, I'll then add my aquarium pump tube to introduce bubbles. These bubbles will agitate the bath and cause any bubbles forming on the car to dislodge. If you do not agitate the bath, the bubbles can form and remain on the metal surface and cause circles in the metal, giving it an inconsistent plate. Because I'm using a single zinc electrode, I'll need to turn the car about every 15 minutes to be sure that the sides are also well plated. Total plating time for this car was about 2 hours, but this is a rather extreme case and other cars that I have practiced on could be done in less time. After the 2 hours I can remove the car. You'll notice that the car takes on a gray appearance. This is the zinc metal. For some reason the hood took on a darker color, but it's also plated. The new zinc layer is a bit rough to the touch and needs to be lightly sanded. I don't want to use anything too harsh on the zinc, so I'll drop the car in a vibratory polisher and let that run for about 12 hours to lightly sand the zinc. If you go back to the beginning of this video, you can see how pronounced the discoloration was in this car. To get it to show up like that, I had placed it in the vibratory polisher. I had discovered several months ago that the vibratory polisher would really make the discoloration stand out. Here you can see the car after about 12 hours in the polisher and no discoloration is noticeable. But since this is not a really good stopping point, I'll go ahead and polish up the car a bit so you can see how nice and shiny the zinc looks. So here's how the car came out after a little bit of polishing. Now to be fair, polishing the car completely hides the discoloration. The previous shot of the car after the polisher is proof that the car was indeed plated. However, the zinc layer makes for a very bright metal compared to the Zaymac Mattel uses, so modern cars plated in zinc and polish will come out brighter looking than cars that are just polished. As you can guess, plating the cars is a big game changer for me. Cars that really need to be sanded can be without any worry of destroying the zinc layer. 
and as I said before, modern cars play just fine and thus can benefit from this process. If you like more in-depth information on this process, I'll leave a link to a video from Arnold's design that inspired me to give this a try. I'll also leave links to the other items I use in case you want to buy everything online. Most of the items can be purchased from normal grocery stores and hardware stores. You can also buy zinc plates from most boating stores as a sacrificial anode, but it's also easy to buy online. Well, let me know what you think below. Now that I have this issue taken care of, I can finish this car in a future video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.